Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, I'm gonna talk about copepods and why they're so important for your reef tank. All right guys, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of my dream reef tank build. I'm gonna start off by saying it feels a little bit weird filming this, it's quite late at night. My family are off sleeping soundly and I'm out here standing in front of a camera and a fish tank talking to myself, but uh, there is a little bit of a reason to my madness and that is that um, tonight I've waited till the lights out so that I can add some live copepods to my tank. And I figured I should take you guys through the process of one, adding them to the tank and also discussing why I believe they're such an important element to every reef tank. Okay, so as people know that have been watching this channel, this tank was started off with dry sand and artificial rock. Now, I've done as much as I possibly can to bring in as healthy a biodiversity as possible into this reef tank by uh, running some preceded media from my other tanks, using uh, water from water changes out of my old tanks, bringing in uh, some bacterial supplements, adding a little bit of live rock into my uh, sump to make sure that all the beneficial things can come out of that live rock, and even some things like uh, Aquaforest Life Source, a nice uh, nutrient, uh, well not so much nutrient, biodiversity rich um, mud material which uh, just adds all sorts of microfauna to your tank. Now, as good as that is, I still feel like I'm missing one element and that is uh, what I believe will hopefully be addressed by copepods and uh, these little guys, I picked these up today from my local fish shop from uh, Coral Creatures. I know you can get these from most local fish shops across Australia. If you can't, you can also jump on their website and I'll pop the details down below so you can actually order them to get delivered straight to your door. However, if your local fish shop isn't carrying this stuff yet, you need to tell them to get in touch with coral creatures because they carry a great range of uh, brine, copepods, phytoplankton, and today they even brought in some uh, captive bred peppermint shrimp, which were really, really cool. But um, Today's episode's on copepods and I wanted to talk about why I want to add them into the tank because I feel like they're often uh, a little bit misunderstood or a little bit undervalued. Most reefers that uh, I speak to think of copepods as a uh, food for uh, mandarins or dragonets and that's it. <laughs> and um, whilst that is one of their benefits, they do provide a fantastic food source for these fish. In fact, I think most mandarins need a good healthy copepod population really to survive. I know some captive bred ones now are eating uh, frozen and pellets, but um, giving them a good healthy copepod population won't hurt either. But uh, that is only one of the benefits and it's absolutely not where the buck stops there. These little guys here are actually a fantastic little part of the micro cleanup crew. Now, we talk about adding uh, snails of various types into the tank to eat up uh, detritus and uh, clean algae and stuff like that. These guys do exactly the same thing. They just do it on a much, much smaller level. So the pods themselves actually feed off microalgae, protozoans, and organic matter. Now, because they're so small, they're obviously eating this at a micro level, and it's not something you can really address with any other source. So copepods play, play this vital role between uh, your bacterial size type of uh, organism and then your uh, smaller fish and uh, cleanup crew organism, you've got to have something in that gap and that's where copepods fit in perfectly. Another overlooked factor of the copepods is that some corals will actually feed on the copepods themselves. So you've got this full chain reaction of events happening in there and um, personally I couldn't imagine a reef tank without a healthy copepod population. Now despite the fact that my tank started with uh, dry sand and artificial rock, copepods would eventually make their way in there. They'd come in on some frag plugs or some corals or um, even when I got some, uh, uh, some algae for my, uh, for my refugium, some copepods would come in there and that's all good and well. I want to add as many as I can and get that population in there and uh, thriving and uh, uh, breeding and doing their thing before getting just the little odds and ends in on some frags. So, I picked up this here 500ml bottle of uh, live copepods from uh, my local fish shop today from Coral Creatures. I'll get some close up footage of this bottle, it's, it's unlike anything else. I know um, we're probably spoiled here, I've seen some video of um, copepods in uh, bottles overseas and I'm sorry um, you guys in America, hopefully your uh, copepod suppliers are a lot better now but um, this thing is teeming with copepods um, and they are all well and truly big enough to see with the naked eye. You don't need to put these things under a microscope. They're 
it's packed full of life. Now, you're probably not gonna see it from there, but um, I'll get a close up and you can have a good look there. Now, the next thing we need to do is add these into the tank, and uh, that's the main reason why I'm filming quite late at night. I wanted to make sure the um, lights were off. You wanna make sure that you've already fed the fish so that uh, they're not just gonna eat every copepod in there. That being said, there's hundreds, if not hundreds, and, well, there's thousands, if not tens of thousands of copepods in this bottle, so I'd be surprised if they did eat them all, but I wanna give these guys a fighting chance. So the fish have been fed, the lights are off. The last thing I'm gonna do is actually get a little bit of PVC pipe, um, just to make sure that I can put this down under the sand, give the copepods a chance to get right down onto the substrate so they can start uh, colonizing that without uh, just floating around in the water column and finding their way into my uh, filter roller and, um, basically living their life down there. I wanna get these guys into the display tank and I want them to settle in there. So I might even turn a little bit of flow off. Um, I'm sure they'll probably be fine, but it can't hurt. I'll put the pumps on uh, feed mode. I'll get the pipe, we'll pour them in, job done. All right, that's probably enough close-ups of the uh, pop uh, population density of these uh, copepods and just how active they are. If you couldn't see these little bugs uh, crawling around in there, you're gonna need thicker glasses than I've got because um, this bottle is jam-packed to them and it's fresh from uh, being aquacultured and uh, caught today. So I'm super lucky to have close access to these things, but um, that being said, I know the quality of uh, Coral Creatures products and I'm sure if you had to get them overnight to you, they're gonna hold up just fine. But um, anyway, I've got my uh, PVC pipe. I've popped it down into the sand bed there. Um, it's just wedged in. Again, I don't know how necessary this step is, but um, every little bit's not gonna, uh, is not gonna hurt. I had a bit of clean PVC there. It's probably better than just pouring on the top and having half of them go over the overflow, uh, down the weir, into the uh, filter roller and getting pulled out. So this will hopefully direct them right down into the substrate, um, onto the sand and rock, and uh, they can go about doing their business. So I'm gonna pour these guys in now. It's probably not gonna be that um, spectacular footage. You're gonna see the back of a sweaty guy, but um, I'm gonna pour them in and uh, let the magic begin. Like I said, riveting footage. All right, now I've pulled them all in. Now, one last tip, rather than just turfing this bottle or uh, putting it aside, it's worth giving this a little bit of a dip, give a bit of a rinse in the aquarium because um, chances are there's still quite a few organisms hanging onto the bottle. So I'm just gonna swish that in there a couple of times just to make sure I got as many of them out of there as I can, which can be easier said than done, but all right, we should be good. All right, guys, there you have it. A nice, super simple, short and sharp episode today, but an absolutely crucial step. And um, I'd like to think that uh, if you're starting a roof tank with uh, dry rock, I highly recommend you do everything in your power to get as much biodiversity in that tank as possible. It should help you get through some of those strange, uh, Things that happen when uh, biodiversity is get a bit out of whack and you see some uh, cyanos or dinoflagellates or uh, some other nuisance algaes come about because one part of the food chain is missing. So by all means, make sure you get your bacterial diversity up, get your uh, microfauna diversity up, make sure you've got a good diverse cleanup crew and um, hopefully you'll have a nice happy reef tank. Fingers crossed anyway, that's my plan. So uh, I'll wrap this video up there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I know a lot of you have been and I really appreciate it. It helps get my videos out to other reefers around the world. So um, if you think this was a good video and you think other reefers around the world would like to see it, please do hit that thumbs up button. And as always, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider hitting that button down in the corner. It goes a long way to helping me out and it will let you know when my next video comes out. Last but not least, guys, if you had any questions, comments, feedback, whatever it may be, pop it in the comment section down below. I ensure I personally reply to each and every one. So um, I look forward to chatting to you there. But uh, until next time, guys, stay safe, keep briefing. Bye.